All right, so the Air Jordan 33, we are engineered for flight. Designed and engineered to the exact specifications for flight. This is the Air Jordan 33. Guidance release 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Ignition sequence has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have commit and we have liftoff at 2.13. The Saturn V building up to 7.6 million pounds of thrust and it has cleared the tower. What's good everyone, it's Marvin from mjo23dan.com. Today's review, I want to go ahead and talk about the Air Jordan 33. So we're in the 33rd year basically of the Air Jordan Signature Series and that's pretty crazy for a signature or for a shoe to go this long is pretty big milestone, 33 years. And so with the Air Jordan 33, I really haven't felt this way about an Air Jordan for a while probably since like the 23 and the 23 is when i like really got out there and i tried to like hustle to get the shoes but in this video we're gonna find out whether it met my expectations what i felt about the shoe overall from a consumer standpoint what you guys think about it and what you guys should look out for and you know just give you my perspective so you guys can make an honest purchasing decision now before i begin I'd like you guys to be able to share the video, thumbs it up, leave a comment down below. Also, I still have my t-shirts. I think I have like one extra large size left, maybe two, um, and then the rest are like large, medium, and small. So if you guys want to support what I do, purchase a shirt. But enough of all that, let me go ahead and get into the details of this entire release. So the Air Jordan 33 is going to be released on October 18, 2018 for a price tag of $175. So this is the box. I was able to get this shoe off Nike sneakers. There was an early release of it and uh, jumped on. J23 actually was clutch when he tweeted out you know, that this was available and uh, jumped on it. So ever since the Air Jordan, I'd say the Air Jordan 28, I've always had to go a half size up on my Air Jordan Signature sneakers. I don't know why that is, but they've always run narrow for me. Um, before then, I've always been true to size. So it might be like a change in the materials or whatnot, but I, I always felt like that. But I'll go over sizing a bit later in the video. So this lid is pretty interesting. Um, you'll see like a little bit of the inspiration of the shoe right here. It says engineered for flight, and that's all around the box lid. This ribbon system and the sneaker overall works on like a ratchet pulley type system. And I'll go over that just a little bit as well. But this is the box lid here. So you have the jump man on the underside. Um, also with the shoe it, or with the packaging itself, it comes with the uh, instructions on how to actually lace this thing up. So this is a card and it's actually a pretty, you know, decent looking card here. Nothing on the back side here. Uh, you, know, you can pause the video if you guys want to see like the details and whatnot and how to insert your foot inside the sneaker and how to eject yourself out of the sneaker. I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty rad. I guess as far as like a separate card from the packaging itself, it's cool. But I think I would have liked to see this actually on the lid here. Um, you'll see like on the Air... You'll see like on the Air Jordan 20, 21... Uh, they have like the inspiration, the details, the technology even of the entire shoe on the box 
on the box lid. Uh, these are the red suede, still dead stock, awesome shoe, love it. And um, you know, speaking of the technology itself, there's a hex bag on the back of the shoe, which I'll discuss also. Uh, that is going to be, uh, it's like a hexagonal shape. It's a double stack unit that's really awesome. It, was, it wasn't present in these, these were just a single and uh, you, you would change it right here. So something in, I believe this is 2006, that Jordan brand did that was pretty innovative. And uh, let's just get into the Jordan 33. All right, so the Air Jordan 33, we are engineered for flight. Designed and engineered to the exact specifications for flight. This is the Air Jordan 33. So again, I was talking about earlier in the video and I'm pretty sure you guys have seen other videos as well. I'm fortunate enough to be able to get this before release day to be able to present to you guys here. Um, again, this is coming from a consumer standpoint. It's nothing from a tech standpoint or anything like that. If you guys really wanna see like the performance reviews of this, you know, hit up my buddy Chris Nightwing2303, weartesters.com or on YouTube. Um, he has a fantastic breakdown of the performance of the Air Jordan 33. But enough of all that. So uh, this has no laces. Um, it's worked on a ratchet system. And this is the actual lacing system right here. This, from what I've heard from the designer Tate Kubris, who uh, also designed the Air Jordan 18 and the Air Jordan 19, uh, came back and designed the 31, 32, and now the 33. So how this works is slip it on. And I've heard a lot of people that have it early already complaining about how it's hard to get your foot in. I'll demonstrate that in a bit as well. But basically you unstrap the side, the medial side strap right here, and you pull it open. It's okay if it comes off, you can do that because it'll come back in. And you slip your foot in, all right, put that strap on, tighten that strap how you want, and then it says pull. So you can pull it up to 20 times, and that is the max that it'll go. So you'll hear the clicking, and this is the ratchet system right here. This is the actual system right here. So you'll pull it. You hear that clicking, and you hear that little piece right there moving. Once you pull it, it'll conform to your foot. And it's an actual like ribbon ribbon and cord system where it, it it zigzags like on the top of your foot. So if you imagine like putting a cord around a series of ribbons and that ribbon is actually conforming to your foot, it's actually locking you down. So that's what that's doing here. And I tried to like, oh, and here's the eject button. So if you want to eject it, you just pull on this and the shoe would be undone. I'll talk about that also but back to this ribbon system here this ribbon and cord system it's uh i tried to open all this up and i'll try to show it here on the video as well but so this ribbon right here is just a standalone piece it's actually sewn in to the lateral side so this right here goes through the tongue this is the first layer of the tongue right here and then it's like a neoprene type booty on the second part. And then you'll see the inner workings of the ribbon system, which is, I'm sorry if it's hard to see, but it like zigzags and it comes from under the footbed and it comes over and that cord is wrapped around just like it is on the top here where you see it. And it pulls it through this ratchet system, what they're calling fast fit. And there's been many iterations of this technology where they've actually had to test it to see if it works and this is the best that they've come up with. I'm still skeptical about it because I don't know how this will do long term. But as far as like the ribbon system, it, again, it zigzags on the top of the foot and this cord, it actually locks you in. But going back to this fast fit system, I'm, I'm still not sure. If you guys have ever dabbled in race cars or RC cars, gas powered cars, um, you'll understand like how that pulley system works. Or even if you guys mow your lawn, that, that pull starter, that pulley system that's in your lawnmower, I feel like there's lots of inner workings with that pulley system that if you 
pull too much or pull too hard or whatever it'll actually crack and make these springs come loose and all that stuff so i'm still very skeptical about how this would perform long term again they came up with like hundreds of iterations of this pulley system and this is what they've you know pretty much come up with the best one for the shoe again i was saying there was two types of of tongues here there's the inner booty right here and then there is the top part of the tongue here and this has the gold jump man on it and then gold hits on the underside of it you also have gold hits on the rear as well as the nike air which is funny because the shoe doesn't have nike air at all or an air sole it's an unlocked zoom unit actually two of them so going back to what i said about the air jordan uh 21 that hexagonal shape this is the uh, zoom bag it's unlocked meaning that it's not glued in there it's actual sole and then you got the midsole which is foam then you have the air unit this is placed in the heel and then an another air unit here at the forefoot and then on top of that you have a carbon fiber plate which is supposed to be I forgot how much they said like X amount stronger than the last one which was the 32 and then the air units itself they're not glued in place they're actually unlocked that's what it means it's not like you know bound by glues or anything like that it's right there so you wherever you need it most whether it's the forefoot or the heel it's going to give you maximum responsiveness and that's pretty much what you want in an Air Jordan or a basketball shoe in general so let's go ahead and um pull this through again this is a standalone ribbon you actually thread it through the back of the tongue and then pull that through and then on medial side lock it up i gotta say that it is one of the easiest shoes to actually lace up even though there are no laces all you pretty much have to do is just pull this cord up and you're good to go um my gripe about it is that there is like bunching here so you'll see like the creases and stuff like that even when i had my foot inside the sneaker uh, i saw that and then as far as like ejecting the shoe you'll see like you have to pull it up but you'll see how that works so my gripe about that is once you pull it it still looks like it's you know tied up or laced up or whatever you want to call it um, you still have to loosen the end so I would say right here just below the pull system you pull this okay if you want to unlace the rest and then you pull this off well, actually take off the strap pull this off and then you can take your foot out so I think with the reports that people have been saying where it's hard to uh, take your foot out or put your foot back in you definitely have to remember to take off the strap pull this apart and then eject make sure that that's loose and then pull the rest of the shoe or, or the cord here uh, one other thing that people thought was this cord whether it's going to be durable enough for you to use uh, tate had said that this is the same cord that they use in parachutes and it's strong enough to eject the parachute and hold the person suspended in air um, it's strong enough to be in a basketball shoe so hopefully that's the case we'll see it's just pretty interesting to like lace up but yeah like even the eject button i feel like i didn't feel like immediate um ejection if that's what you call it uh you still have to like pull it and then pull the lace right here so i think they can work on this system if they're going to be using it for the air jordan 34 next year um they can work on this design and you know probably make it make it better but i would have liked to be able to pull it to have my foot contained in the shoe and then eject it and actually feel like you know like when you when you take off your clothes and like you but you guys know what I mean, like, you know, you just want to be able to know, like, once you eject it, that's when you can, like, fully remove your foot from the shoe, and that's one other thing. 
Um, I probably still would have preferred laces, to be honest with you. Um, laces is just something that's been traditional in sneakers for a really long time. And this pulley system or this rat ratchet system, the fast fit, is just something different. So that's as far as like the design like commentary I have of it. And I think it can be improved. I do love the strap on the side. This is that standalone strap that actually comes over and locks your foot back here in the heel. And I love it. You know, it, it, I feel like I have, you can even see it right here, how it pulls down the tongue. And it just gives you ultimate lockdown there as well. All right, so as far as like the looks of the sneaker, this was the only one that I wanted of the Air Jordan 33. I saw the blackout one or the black cat looking shoe. That one's cool, but I think just like little pops of color here and there, the white, black, red with the little gold hits. It's clean. I like it. It reminds me of like Chicago Bulls or reminds me of Michael Jordan. It looks like a shoe that Jordan could have been wearing while he was on the Chicago Bulls. As far as like the back, again, it's supposed to be reminiscent of the Air Jordan 3. So I also saw a lot of pictures of people transplanting or photoshopping the elephant print from the 3 onto the Air Jordan 33. While I feel like that's cool and all, I don't think that should be the look. This Air Jordan 33 is just the way it looks. I think it's it's perfect with just like a you know minor things I would have changed up here and there, but I don't think this sneaker needs elephant print at all. You see the design elements of the three with this fuse piece here at the toe. It's the same thing as the Air Jordan 3 with the elephant print here at the toe. And then the rear of the Air Jordan 3, you'll see like these mountains and valleys, you know, this, this piece right here. You'll see it also on the Air Jordan 33. So a lot of people have said, I don't see the Jordan 3 at all. It's there. And then this rear part where it says Nike Air, come on. But what's funny about this is that it doesn't have Nike Air, it has Zoom Air. So I understand that they're trying to pay tribute to the Air Jordan 3 by putting Nike Air on the back, but I don't think this was necessary. I think just having a Jumpman there, it would have paid tribute anyways. I don't think it should have had Nike Air on the back if the sneaker do itself doesn't have Nike Air. Um, there's also a jewel piece here, which I don't entirely understand what it's for or the storytelling part of it. There's about 10 lines on there, and I'm not sure what that's all about. So it's on both sneakers. I wish I would have had a little bit more of a storytelling there with that, but I don't think it was necessary. Um, the strap here at the rear, and then the strap or the pull tabs up at the front I feel like this should have been the same as this because you can't really if you have big fingers dude you can't really get your finger in there and and pull yourself into the shoe this right here has good leeway so you can get your foot into the shoe but I feel like this piece right here should have been longer or at least the same size as this coming below the pull tab, you have the Air Jordan 33 right there. It is the same on the left shoe that as it is on the right shoe. And then the inspiration for this, if you guys don't know, is it's a 33. So you'll see just a little bit of it popping out if you're wearing the shoe. So that is the uh, signature number for this sneaker. You got the gold jump man up at the top of the tongue. It is a new buck material. It's not suede. I don't see the uh, the moves of the material from fade to solid. So it's like a new buck feel. The uh, foam is like that foam that I don't really like. It's soft, it's bouncy, it's cushiony, but it's one of those foams where they crease like really bad. So if you guys really wanted to wear this sneaker casually, you'll find like a lot of the, the creasing happening uh, over time. So if you guys aren't into that look just like I am, you have to deal with it. As far as comfort's concerned, you still have that foam backing on the back of this mesh, which is pretty much primarily all over the sneaker. It's a mesh material 
and then the neoprene you know inside booty and then on the lining itself it's just foam and then on the rear of the Achilles which is really nice I think they should have put this piece all around the inside lining it's got like I would say a memory foam and it's like the back is pretty rigid so it, again they're playing off like that containment that locked down on the back of your Achilles here but this pillowy piece right here is just awesome and I think again it should have been lined all the way around the collar uh, as far as craftsmanship's concerned you still see you know again the creases on the midsole and then maybe some glue marks on the side pretty sure you guys can pick that up right there and then there was like this blob of glue on the right shoe which is right here sure if you pick that up you can pick it off and it shouldn't be a big deal um, as far as like this material right here that goes from the vamp of the shoe all the way at the top of the collar it's uh, it, it's got like a dirt looking look so uh, it, it, this is a brand new sneaker coming out the box so you'll see I'm not sure maybe you can see it but it just looks like a little dirty already and uh, I like to hear from people that have actually worn the sneaker out and let me know what you guys thought I, I think that picks up dirt like really quickly I mean it may be just the mesh material showing through but uh, I don't like the look so it's it's pretty pretty weird Oh, one other thing I didn't cover is the fast fit system. There's a storytelling piece like right around the ring of the fast fit system. And that is supposed to represent Michael Jordan's championships. Uh, another piece of craftsmanship that I saw was, you know, there's a gold underlay of this on the medial side of the shoe. And you can see it peeking through right here at the edges and that's just something that doesn't look clean I, I think they could have cleaned that up a little bit or they didn't really have to do the gold underneath at all there's a gold jump man right here at this little stud area just to hold that cord in place and uh that's about it you know what are your thoughts overall the air jordan 33 i think people are still excited about it if i'm gonna give it like a rank you know as far as like aesthetics comfort style design all that i would probably give it like a seven and a half to an eight i think there could have been like again much more improvement with this lacing system and the eject portion of it and then the nike air on the back we'll see what happens you know jordan brand's going to drop a lot more colorways of the air jordan 33 a lot of athletes have already uh release like their team colors or team versions of it so it's pretty interesting to see like um the color blocking of how they actually did the uh, 33 and uh again it looks clean so i would say aesthetically it looks really nice is this something that you're gonna buy again it's october 18 2018 for price tag of 175 dollars as far as like release details i didn't see anyone else releasing them but I believe East Bay, and this is just the major ones, East Bay and Foot Locker. Um, you might want to check in with your local Foot Locker. I know there's a few of them that are going to be having it. I think they made the initial launch colorway limited. So again, this is the initial launch colorway, and you want to check with your, uh, your local Foot Locker and check it out. I'll also put a link in the description if you guys miss out on the pair. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll be on StockX. So if you guys click the link down below for StockX and you guys want to purchase the pair, put in a bid, buy the shoe, um, a portion of that sale helps me out. So again, it's MJO23Dan. This is the Air Jordan 33. Talk to you guys later. Take care.